<laughs> one time hey, I was... Go ahead. I was just gonna say, one time I was recording with Psychedelic Eyeball and he pretended to drown when I said sink. <laughs> <laughs> glub, glub. <laughs> well, how are we gonna leave that in? Oh, whatever. Hey, everybody, it's Visual Novel Book Club. I'm your pal, Slow Beast. With me, of course, my good friend, Devious Vacuum. Yo! My good friend, Polo Hoko. Good evening. My good friend, Turbo C. Hello. My good friend, Jim. Hey, everybody. We are back with Dream Daddy episode four, I believe. It is. Yes. And uh, we are continuing toward romance with our good friend, Matt. Matt Sella, I think his name is. Matt Sella, yeah. What is his name? We love him. Um, we do. So, what, uh, what happened? We ended our first date with him at the concert. We met Pup. You know the real pup. What what happened next? Well, the in between part, um, if we remember to line it up with the last uh, route, is uh, Amanda gets her acceptance letter from the Horn Institute for the Arts. That she wanted really wanted to go to. And we take her out for burritos, excited about our daughter going to college, and uh, then it spits us back out to select who we want to date for date two. We select Matt. Um, our, our dad is, is suddenly very outgoing and it's like, you know what? I can just walk literally like a block down the street and just talk to Matt at the coffee spoon. <laughs> so we do that. Yeah. And it's a very Matt thing. I don't need to be a millennial on the phone. Yeah. It's a very analog thing to do. It's like, oh, this is <laughs> Matt. He's old school. We can just walk down the street. Yeah. We don't even need to bother with the dad book. <laughs> I think you meant analog is in analog a hate story. Because I, oh, like, I don't remember that part of it. Where <laughs> Nothing like that in this game. No, we haven't gotten to the part where we met coffee for Matt yet. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. We had, we bust into the coffee spoon with Amanda. We ask her if she wants to go, if we want to buy her coffee. And uh, who is working behind the counter? It's Bobo. Bobo. Poison element Shaggy. It's that good boy. <laughs> He's so he's such a good boy. Matt, please buy him a uniform. Yeah, for real. <laughs> he's kind of a mess. <laughs> please make him wear a hairnet around the coffee. <laughs> oh god, so many green hairs. <laughs> oh, um, but so he's saying hello and talks to Amanda at all at any amount, and our protective dad instincts kick in, um, and we're like, oh no, this this young man of ill repute is being nice to our daughter. Very creepy, man. Better better uh, intervene in some way. So what did, what did you guys decide to do? Pablo introduces her to some kind of like music genre called, I think it's Witch House. Yeah, Witch House. As a protective dad, we have the option of agreeing that Witch House is an awesome music genre so that our daughter won't like it. Right. Oh, yeah. I see. Reverse psychology. Okay. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. I defended Witch House. I was, I'm going for World's Okayest Dad, which, it, you know, it's a little, it hurts a little. Um, and so I couldn't really tell what the wrong answer here was. So I just went with, uh, what was it? Like, borrow lines from Taken? Oh, yeah. Reappropriate lines from Taken, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So how, how did, well, so you tell me first, how did Witch House go when you try to do that? Not as embarrassing as I thought. It would be. It's just kind of like, hey, Amanda, don't be so down on Witch House. It's, it's, I'm sure it's great. I haven't heard it, but I'm sure it's great. <laughs> and that's it. I, uh, yeah, so I was basically like, uh, you know, I, I've picked up certain skills in my life. I can, uh, type reasonably fast. And it's like, and if you harm one hair on Amanda's head, I will write a document at you, you know. And then Amanda's like, Dad. And then, you know, next scene. So I don't know if there is a right way out of this. I don't think either. I, the the guy didn't have anything. Um, I, I picked the other option, which was try and change the subject, which uh, involves you basically shouting, is that new? I don't remember exactly what he said. But it was like, is is the menu new? No, he goes He goes to Pablo. It, it, and it, it's all in caps. So you, my first thought was like that Will Ferrell character who can't control his volume. Like, yeah. Is it your first day today, Pablo? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, Matt comes immediately out, and I'm like, oh, maybe we're just shouting so Matt can realize and he can be the one that actually saves us. Yeah, and that is actually what happens. Matt just comes out and he's like, oh, hey, what, Pablo, you're supposed to take these people's order. <laughs> <laughs> Stop freaking out the customers. He, uh, 
they make a they make a comment about like puns are the highest form of comedy, but it was really Matt like making a reference to a song from an album by the artist that was referencing. But we were just like, yeah, they are. So we ordered a Father Do- John Misto, and um, Amanda complains about the the pun, um, and then Matt says that it's pure comedy, but pure comedy was the um, name of an album by Father John Misty. Yeah, but that doesn't get that. So he's just like, you're right. That is the highest form of comedy. And he's like, um, no, it's an album. T- don't worry about it. It's great. I really identify with my dad in this chapter because there's kind of a lot of music stuff that gets dropped and I don't know what they're doing. And I appreciate, like, with Craig, you know, Craig is very accepting of us even though we don't know anything about exercise. And, like, Matt is also very accepting of us even though we don't know as much as he does about music. Or our only music knowledge is ska. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we're basically the Dan Reichardt of uh, dads. (laughs) God, we are! Yeah. (laughs) Um, I I will say this is basically, like, the only reference that they pretty much explain throughout the rest of Matt's sessions. And the other ones I had to, like, either look up or try and figure out myself. Uh, but I tried to catch as many as I could, so we'll we'll get to those when we get to them. Yep. So we hang out with Matt. Um, Amanda immediately ignores us to be on her laptop, and we just hang with Matt for a while and drink some coffee. And we notice that um, we feel really comfortable around him, and he's really comfortable around us, which is such a contrast to how he is like around other people, where he's so nervous all the time. Like he he just talks to us, and and we're like, oh, like this guy's supposed to be nervous, right? He's not nervous. Yep. And then, let's see, and then I I guess we, like, hang out for, like, hours? Because then it's, like, it's, it's, like, clothes, or he's, he feels comfortable leaving Pablo by himself, and they, and we go to the record store. Vinyl Fantasy 7. Oh, it's the worst, worst name ever. Like, Jesus. That's, that's just, like, that's bad on so many levels. Okay, so, uh, I do have to interrupt here, because this, uh, was probably not an intentional reference, but Vinyl Fantasy, Vinyl Fantasy 7, uh, in... Dream Daddy is a band, but in real life is an album by uh, a person who calls himself Team Teamwork, and it's a mashup of Final Fantasy VII songs and um, different rap artists, and it, it's it's a fucking bop. Oh my god, I actually love that stuff. So thank you. Do they do they have one winged angel? Uh, they do. It, obviously, right? Like, wait, here, what, uh, now I have to see what that's mashed up with. One wig and angel, but it's a rap. Yeah, it's it's so cool and transformative when when it's like such a like a an unexpected mashup, and then it works really well. It's like I love that. It's great. Yeah, it's bringing back all these memories too. Because now I'm like, I was, I remember like just being so shocked, like, oh my god, they got like a friggin' chorus singing in Latin for a video game. This is like, <laughs> this is the deepest thing I've ever heard. This is. <laughs> god, there were so many moments in Seven where you're just like, oh my god, I can't believe they did this. I know. And now looking back, you're like, Jesus. And only on three discs. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and I was like, oh my god, like, Cloud, he doesn't even care, he's not even, like, a hero or anything, this is great, and it's just like, yeah, he's just an anti-hero, but like, yeah, but we didn't have shit on console like that before, you know? He's so cool. I saw somebody on Twitter, I think it might have been Chip Cheesem, actually, who was just like, I'm not really getting Final Fantasy IV, like, none of these characters are resonating with me, and I'm like, but you don't get it, like, if you were, like, a console gamer growing up, the reason they were such great characters is because they were characters. Yeah, it's like a Seinfeld isn't funny thing, right? Like, you, can, it's hard to go back and evaluate it on today's standards, versus at the time, it meant so much more, it was so much more rare. Exactly, yeah. But that said, Final Fantasy IV is great. Anyway, um... And, and Claude was able to do all that without killing his family, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Matt helps us buy a record. So we're in the, the, the record store looking at vinyls, and we're like, I haven't bought a vinyl record in forever, but we have a player, but it's for, like, children's music. We are pumped for it, though. Hmm? We're, no, we're like, we're, like, pumped to do it. We're like, I don't really get this, but I want to do it. I don't know why people like vinyl. Yeah, and Matt, like, gives a really good answer, I feel like, which is, like, if he's, like, a lot of people say, like, oh, well, the sound is better or whatever, but he's, like, sometimes it's just nice to, to like, own a physical thing nowadays, yeah. which is also, I think, a, a nice uh, reason to do it. It doesn't have to be, like, this sort of perfect thing. It can just be, like, I like it. 
Yeah, like like most people don't have like eight hundred dollar tube amps. Like they they just have a normal ass record player. So like it's not a giant. You know, like there's no like sound influence. It's more like hey, I get to hold this thing and I got this. I get to look at the sheets and take things off the you know take these records out of the out of the sleeve and everything. It's like that kind of stuff is that resonates with a fan who likes to hold stuff. I wonder if people get nostalgic for VHS tapes like that. Oh hell yeah. You know what's funny? Like the other day too, I forgot what it was, but like I had a physical book I was looking at, and like you know, like books like they have like a certain smell to them and mm-hmm. like a way they feel mm-hmm. when you read. Yep. And it's like I I've been doing e reader or like you know my i reading on my iPhone or my like iPad or whatever for like so long. It's like I kind of forgot for a while, you know, or like you have that like that bookshelf where like everything is, and it's just like yeah, that's like it's like a trophy wall kind of. Except it makes you seem smart. Sure, definitely one one shelf, not not multiple bookcases. This might be like, but this is like a real thing. Um, this is like a, maybe a little too off topic, but I attended a human computer interaction talk a few years ago, and it was t- it was there was the, the keynote was about sort of the future of human computer interaction and the idea that we have moved away from physical objects to screens, and the, sc- the screens have this sort of like. You can re- you can try to you can touch the surface of the water, but you can't reach your hand into the water to touch what's in it, and that that's like a, a fundamentally lacking uh, thing, and that we're we're we, and that the future of it was to move more and more, and by the future I mean like fifty years, hundred years. Um, the the projection was that we would uh, we would have the technology to to bring more haptics into these interfaces and go back to touching things because touching things feels good. I just thought that was like such a great perspective to have on it like to be like no it's totally possible to have it both ways like we shouldn't we, we like this you're saying that like in the future when the technology gets there like it'll be like in the movies where the interface is a big virtual screen that you kind of move around and you like you can grab something and put it somewhere else there's all kinds of stuff maybe and there's also like deformable surfaces where the surface becomes the interface, so it's like uh, you know, like a bunch of columns, and they raise and lower, and then you can like physically press things. But that's like the important part of it is the physical sensation, like the haptic. Yeah, and that's like what we miss when we just have tablets and stuff like that. I mean, for me, it's not even like the the physical response. It's like so, like when we have a you know, to bring it back on topic slightly, uh, video games. I don't really like to download onto a console or anything if if possible i'd like to ha- actually buy a case and a cd yeah and yeah i know that do that and it's not because like i like to have it it's because i like to point at something that physically exists and say that's mine mm-hmm. i wonder how much of a generational thing that'll be like i wonder if the the kids that are cho- that are kids now will still have that will still like feel that same like lizard brain response to like a physical object versus a virtual one i just like to collect shiny things I mean, I feel like these days that conversation that conversation is more geared towards like preservation because I do kind of like to to buy things to have them because if I download something, it's like it could just disappear, you know? But if I have it, it I have it. It's weird that you like I never cared about game collection until like somewhat recently, like now that like I have like a bunch of these consoles around and now I'm like it's kind of nice to have the thing, you know? Like Mhm. It's yeah, it's just different. You know what? I I, I do wish for a I do, I do wish for a world not where I'm just watching near automata, but where I can slap nine s in the face <laughs> and like feel if only that, like yeah. I thought you were gonna go like not just watching nine s, but hearing someone commentate over it and making lame jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a world I can only dream of. We can only imagine that. <laughs> yeah. So what? Uh, what music? So we a- ask your, we answer some personality questions. Yeah. We have a quiz, and we get recommended some music. So the first question is: What flavor of milkshake are you? Cookies and cream. Cookies yeah, and cream. Same. Strawberry. Strawberry. Hell yeah. Okay. What? Nobody picked purple. I, I I thought to myself like, oh, someone else will pick these goofy answers. I don't have to worry. That's why I was like, they're all they're all picking purple. I just picked uh, as honestly as I could for all this stuff, which ended up being pretty tame answers. So uh, if you could only buy one uh, one cent of candle for the rest of your life, what would it be? Camouflage summer breeze. Yep, summer breeze. I picked daffodil mountain spring. 
It's also my next tabletop character. These all sound like body washes. Yeah. I kind of, I completely forgot which one I picked, honestly. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> they were confusing names. I, I only remembered because Jim said that one. Yep. The next one is, uh, what is your favorite ambient sound? And I picked rain. Yeah, rain. Yeah, rain. Yeah, because the others were bad. There was, like, bowling alley. I like rain, but I picked the comedy option, which was the bowling alley. Well, there was also howls of the bone chorus. <laughs> I was considering bowling alley, because I'm like, you know, with the, you know, faint echoes of stuff falling down, I could, I could feel that. <sighs> yeah. I could see it, yeah. The next one was, uh... What, where's your dream vacation? And uh, all of them were kind of bad, except yeah. for my backyard, so I picked my backyard. Same here. Yeah. It's like inside a volcano. I picked Ibiza, living off the fat of the land, which is like, it's the closest beachy thing I could think of. Yeah. You know? I was actually surprised that I did not get, uh, so at this, Matt picks out some music for you. I was surprised not picking or picking Ibiza did not immediately give you electronic music. <laughs> yeah, it really should be. That's true. I thought about that. But there's one there's one last question, which is the funniest question, which is what is your biggest fear? And there are like three really fucking real ones and then saying you too when the waiter tells you to enjoy your food. <laughs> okay, you know, I got to say I don't feel that at all. It's like the, they know what you mean. Like, it's just a common human reaction. It's like when it's, I don't know, I, I get it and I don't. I'm like, why is it such a big deal to everyone? You didn't fuck up that bad. Everybody, you know, whatever. I know. It's it's funny. I can I can catch myself doing it at the uh, at the restaurant, but I almost constantly do it when I'm at the movie theater. Yeah, like, enjoy your movie. Thanks, you too. Yeah, you too. <laughs> now, the one that the one that always gets me is the cab at the airport, which is like, I'd have a safe flight. Yeah, you t- Yep. You know, yeah. I always catch myself in the middle of one of those where I'm just like, "Hey, uh, uh, you have a nice day." You you've said that, and I am responding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, he gives you your recommendation. So what what recommendations did we get? Uh, I got uh, R.A.P. by Killer Mike, uh, which was pretty surprising considering I got uh, I picked very white person answers in my opinion, but. Uh, no, I hadn't actually listened to that album before, but uh, it was it was pretty damn good. Matt's got some good tastes. I listened to uh, I or I got Devendra ba- Ban- Devendra Banhart, who is an American Venezuelan singer songwriter, and that is where the song uh, who, who did the song Carmencita, which Matt's daughter is named after Carmencita, and I listened to it, and it has a real goofy music video that's kind of like a. I don't know. It's not Bollywood, but it's like Hindu mythology, like on a low budget. And uh, and to me, it sounds like uh, if the Black Keys were in Spanish, but I'm sure there's a more nuanced opinion. <laughs> That's not a bad take on it. I mean, I I like Devendra Barnhart, and I I own that album already. So like, uh, he does stuff like on to that sort of style. A lot of his stuff is very folky, and. Uh, it's a good thing they didn't name the daughter after the best song on that album, which is "Lover." That would have been weird. Uh, but the uh, yeah, he's a uh, he's got elements of that because he does songs in Spanish and English. So like you know, that's that's one of his really like sort of like you know gritty sort of you know indie like rocker ones. But uh, yeah, I got the same thing. Uh, probably because I think we have the exact same answers mostly. All right. So uh, we anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, I got. I mean, I. <laughs> I don't really have much to say, but um, I got something called Glass Animals, How to Be a Human Being. So I listened a little bit to this one, and that sounds like a... That sounds... That sounds more up my alley than any of the other ones that were suggested. How would you describe it? Um, I don't know. Uh, good. Okay, good enough for me. Oh yeah, this is an interesting song. A lot of drums. Yeah, that was the thing, was the drums were, were good. Um... Google says they are indie rock, psychedelic pop, art pop, trip hop, and indie tronica. Okay. Yeah, the song you linked is 17 minutes long, so that must be art. Oh, that's, I think that's the album. Ah, okay. Oh, it's like A-side, B-side. 17 minutes, oh, A-side. Must be on a, must be on a, on vinyl. Or cassette. Ooh. Now, and uh, just a quick digression. Do you remember, remember like secret tracks on CDs? Yes. Yes. They used to do that. 
They put it, or like some of them put it like track 89 or 99 or something, and it was like kind of a pain in the ass thing, but. There definitely was one on 69. I absolutely remember this. <laughs> oh, for sure. It was like yeah. a tool album or something had in. Oh my god. Uh, but we, we even talked about this with, we talked uh, with Matt about like recording uh, mixtapes off of the radio with cassettes, which I actually did in my life. I was like 10, but I did it. So. <laughs> I had a cassette player in my car, so it's like, I remember doing that because you'd have a bunch of cassettes and you're like, I just, like, it was like before you did like playlists or anything like that. So it was like, that was like your good way of doing a playlist. Like, I just want this song from here and this here and here and all that. Oh, you just like catch it and then record it and then put it all on one tape. Yeah, or if you had like one of those, they used to have like those dual cassette like boombox kind of things oh, where you'd like God, hit, play yeah. on one and record on the other. And then it was like, that's how you could like copy it and you could do all like crazy stuff with it. Music is great. It's hard to imagine, like, you know, it, it, cause compared to now, we're like, <laughs> I mean, it's still, it's still like easy to, to record music and just, just have it. But like, there was so much litigation about it. And then like, the, the idea of just like recording a song off the radio is like, whoa, wow, it's only been like 30 years and this is how much it's changed. <laughs> When I was little, my sister got really mad at my mom and I because she was recording a song off the radio <laughs> and we started yelling upstairs for her. So that got caught on her recording. <laughs> oh. Uh, Matt and uh, your dad, uh, or you, I guess, um, also go into like how it's it's too easy nowadays to just make a playlist. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't have as much heart. Yeah. Uh, and like... I, I thought this was a little bit like old man yells at cloud, but then uh, Matt made up a good point, which is sort of like the effort that you put into it makes it just feel a little bit sweeter. Yeah. Oh, the funny thing is, was too before we uh, like before like Matt picks an album out for us, uh, our dad is looking around at everything and he's looking at all these genres and like most of them are real except nunsploitation, which is not real. <laughs> it's which I looked up because I'm like I've never heard of nunsploitation before, and I looked up. It's, apparently, it's a movie <laughs> genre. <laughs> Oh, that's great. No, it's not. It can't yeah, be. Yeah, from like the 70s. Yeah. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. No, it is. So, yeah, I I never got this, but there's like a weird nun fetish. Like, American Horror Story Season 2 goes, like, dabbles in it, and it's just like, I don't know. Yeah, like, haven't you ever been in any Halloween costume store? <laughs> oh, yeah, Jesus Christ. I know, but I never understood that for the life of me. You don't have to understand it. <laughs> I know, but, like, you know, it's like one of those... I feel like an alien looking at humans, like, scientifically, I get it, but I just do not feel it, you know? Anyway, I'm sorry, I just had to interject that because there was an American horse. Maybe just, you know, fewer millennials went to religious schools where they were taught by nuns in, in the whole outfit. So, you know, maybe it's a generational thing. Yeah, because I, 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 I went to school with, like, nuns, but they didn't wear the outfit. So, I think, it, I think it's more just Sound of Music just unleashed a lot of, a lot of kinks <laughs> for people. <laughs> <laughs> some, young, some young lad, like, what are these strange feelings? <laughs> All right, but anyway. Uh, my aunt was a nun, so that would have been really awkward for me. Oh, you think that's yeah. awkward, motherfucker? My no, 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 no. My mother's a fucking nurse, okay? So that's like one, like third of all costume fetishes <laughs> out the fucking window, just to begin with, okay? And then if you think that's bad, my fucking aunt's a cave woman. It's ridiculous. She lives in a goddamn cave. So that's another. All right. Anyway. Okay. So. What happens next? Um, oh, the, we learn about open mic night. Uh, the cashier at the the record store is one of the members of a band who's going to be at open mic night at the Coffee Spoon. Right. Molly, like, I think her name is Molly Mohawk or something, which is another <laughs> character that we never see. I don't think that's her actual name. Mohawk <laughs> Molly? Yeah, I, I do wish she had a sprite, though, because she sounds extremely cool. Yeah. But women don't exist in this except for Mary. <laughs> Um, so, uh, as we're check, yeah, so Molly Mohawk is in the band Vinyl Fantasy 7, um, and is, I think, touring with a group called The Three Waves that shows up on Open Mic Night later. Um, and Matt, so, also, while we're checking out, Matt also brings up, uh, three vinyls that he wants to check out. Um, 
and let me see if I can remember those, and by that I mean bring up the, the screenshot I took. Uh, so we have, uh, Swear I'm Good at This by Diet Sig, which, uh, hadn't heard of, but was pretty good. It was sort of, uh, pretty chill indie pop. So again, these are all real bands? Yes. Yep. Uh, Forever by Mystery Skulls, which I had heard of before, and it is really good. It's sort of like your electronic, uh, Daft Punk-ish sort of stuff. Um, I highly recommend that. And then Greatest Hits by Remo Drive, uh, which is sort of punk. And I, th- that's the one that I, I knew, because I'd heard that before. Greatest Hits is, is Remo Drive's, uh, only album. <laughs> 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 so it's, they're pretty good, too. So, what else we talk about? We talk about how music can take you back to a specific moment in your life, and he talks about, I think last time, did he, he said last time already that he was in a band, right? Yeah. And so he's like, I remember touring and go, not having any money and all this stuff, and life on the road, and music can take you back to that time. And that somehow segues into how we don't even know where to buy drugs anymore, And that somehow segues into, let's go get some pot and get high and listen to our new music. It's, it's a little, you have it like, yeah, it's because one of you suggests, like, you want to get high and and listen to this. Oh, he does, Matt does, because your responses are like, hell yeah, or drugs are bad, and hell yeah is the right answer. And we go to a, and, and then he calls Molly, who knows a guy. Also, pot's legal. They they make a point of saying that pot is legal in that state, which means they could just go to a dispensary. But okay, sure. I I I kind of feel like that was a last minute addition. Like yeah. somebody on set being like, wait, 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 let's not have them. You know what I mean? Like let's not literally endorse like illegal drug use or something, or even the attempt to buy illegal drugs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like. But it does, I think, help the comedy of it that it makes it more ridiculous. But that's what it smelled like. It yeah, it's it makes it a great comedy because like they don't know what to call it. Like they call it like the marijuana weed or the pot drugs or like. I will say it was a bit weird because like every time that they're like, no, it's legal in the state. It was in response to someone said the feds are here, which is like, no, it's still federally illegal. Like, but you know, you know, oh, but you know what's funny? It's oh yeah. So you know what's funny though is like. That happens, I feel like. I don't know if it's, like, the act of becoming a dad now divorces you from all, like, youth culture whatsoever. Because, like, when y'all say thirsty, too, I'm a l- I'm like, wait, hang on. And I have to, like, s- I have to search again. <laughs> Get him some water. <laughs> oh, God. You could have kept that to yourself, and you would have been fine. I were like, but, like, uh... I'm trying, but... Well, no, but, like, I remember, like, a couple months back, too, I'm like, they can't still call it making out. Like, there has to be another name for it now Ugh. that the kids, you know, but whatever. I'd rather not know. Maybe it's too tame to even have a name. I, this is a little, I feel like this is a little much, like, it's funny, but at the same time, like, I can get, like, some of the criticism of this game being really white because, like, the way that they talk about it, like, it's all, like, fake, like, haha, there's no way we'd ever get in trouble for this, and... It definitely is not representative of all experiences. Totally. So, yeah. We buy drugs in the video game. And who do we buy them from? Lucian. Damien. Lucian, rather. Damien's son, Lucian. (laughs) You made me think his name was Damien. I was like, oh, shit, I messed up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. What the hell? Uh... Damien, you know, we have to do this, like, kind of mutually assured, like, well, I, we won't tell on each other kind of thing. Mutually assured destruction. And he's like, how much how much pot do you want? And both Matt and you are like, one. <laughs> uh, which is funny, but like, come on. Like, you know. Yeah, either you know what this is or you don't. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, so it's fine. And they both said that they were buying drugs at one point. Like, they, they both admitted to have, have, even though decades ago they, they smoked weed. Like, like you know what you bought. Like, you don't know what the prices are now, but you know what you bought. Back in my day, you could get a bag of weed for a quarter. You know what a gram is? A, a dime bag actually cost a dime. Yeah, you still have that, like, unit of measurement. Mm-hmm. That hasn't changed in those 50 years. So they, they buy the weed, they take it back, they start to smoke it. Oops, oregano. I cannot believe this. <laughs> like, that's like, come on. Like, that's like, a, that's like crazy. Like, you, you know what it looks like if you've ever, you know what I mean? Like, 
Also, we're like, oh, it smells like a pizza place now. <laughs> so it's like, it was like, it's you can smell it. It's such like a Kevin James sitcom joke. Like, oh, come on. Like, you know what oregano is. You know what oregano looks like. Yeah, don't put it in the game if you're, if this is what, if you don't know how to deal with the fact that you're referencing a real drug, you know? <laughs> you know how, like, usually when, like, they fuck this up, it's like, usually they fuck it up about the illegal drug. But this time it's like the reverse. You know, like, oh, they like, like, we get that, you know, or it's like somebody who does, actually doesn't smoke marijuana writing about this, you know, it's just like, oh, I get all drive. But it's like, yeah, you would never make this mistake. It does. It just this is totally taking me out. of. I've, I've never had I had a pot, but um, it they they got it for 10 bucks for whatever amount they got. That seems cheap to me. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know the going rate, but... That really should have tipped him off. I will admit I have not smoked it in a long time, but um, it does seem cheap nowadays. Nothing is $10. I, like, I've never done one drug. I'm too disabled. But, like, that, nothing is $10. I'm not going to admit to anything on a recorded podcast that we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> Some of my friends have told me... But you, you could buy $10 worth of pots, certainly. But it just it yeah. wouldn't be very much... I, um, what do you call it? I went to a dispensary with somebody, uh... Who will not be named on the podcast. No, but, um, uh, I didn't buy anything, and I'll just say truthfully, because I, I haven't... I, I don't know why, but at some point around 30, I couldn't stand the smell or taste of pot. I don't know why, but, like, it just... There was a point in my life where I'm like, I hate this now. It's almost like it's super gross. I know, but, like, uh... Yeah, and, and also, like, growing up, I found for some reason there was a point... In, I guess, like, where pot, like, took a step up. Because, like, I felt like there was a point, like, earlier, and you're, like, you could smoke it, and you're, like, kind of drunk or whatever, but then there was a point you took one hit, and you're, like, kind of just, like, oh, fuck, I gotta go to bed now. You know, like, I don't know. It's legitimate, yeah. Like, the, apparently the, the weed from uh, the 70s is something like like 25% or, like, like 15% of what currently is out there. Like, it's, like, it's like like so small, like, like in terms of the, the strength. Yeah. Like, the amount of THC... In, it has just gone through the roof. But, like, I know the dispensary that person I was with spent, like, 90 bucks. And for $90, they got a good amount, but not, like, what you might think $90 of that would. You know what I mean? Like, sure. maybe, like, a couple nights worth. I don't know. Wow. It really is, like, medications now. Once it's legalized, it's going to be hella expensive. But I imagine on the street, it's even 10 bucks is still not, not good enough. But I guess they only had one... One pot cigarette, as they called it. Yeah, did they? Did they fucking just get one blood worth of pot? They they sell the weed cheap, but then they make the rest of the money off all the paraphernalia and T-shirts and <laughs> records and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they get rolling papers from the gas station, and then they don't know how to roll it, and the whole thing just seems like a big disaster from the from its inception. The, and the inception was that they had done this before. That's the thing, like. That's the part that bug. Yeah, it doesn't bug me, but I'm just like, this doesn't work. Yeah, it's like, yeah, they you would. Maybe they're both lying. But so we do. So we don't. We don't get high because it's not really drugs, and we smell like pizza, I guess. And um, it's just weird because if you, even if you burned oregano, it wouldn't stick in your clothes. You just burn some oregano. <laughs> No, Jim, pizza smells like oregano, don't you know? <laughs> Not cheese or tomato, nothing. No. Oregano. Mm-hmm. Have you ever done oregano before? <laughs> uh, while, we're, while we're in here, I didn't take a screenshot of it, so hopefully someone else did, but we when we go to Matt's house, that that's a nice house. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Nice. It's pretty cool. A little loft going? Yep. Way more than based on his... Uh, career history that we heard about that like every everybody has like a very nice house in this game well he he owns the coffee shop right yeah yeah our deal is is the nice cherry blossom tree but the rest of our house looks like eh. yeah we, we kind of got a good backyard and then everything else is kind of eh. you know like the kitchen it's a fixer up or... yeah it's small it's a, it's a two-person house anywho um i gotta get off i gotta get out that habit of anywho that's pissing me off um, <laughs> I know that's, that's your, like, dadism. Like, as soon as my dad retired, he started saying bingo all the time, like, to be, like, <laughs> to be, like, affirmative. And we're like, who the fuck are you? And he's just like, he'll just be like, bingo, let's do it. And I'm like, no, stop. 
One thing that my brother-in-law does this thing where he'll kind of wink at you when he shakes your hand. Oh, and no. And I picked that up. I picked that up. Oh, oh no. that's bad. That's a bad thing to pick up. I know. Well, I, it's not like I did it on purpose. Like, oh, like, get put, in a, put something in the You're going to, like, meet people at MAGFest next year, and they're going to be really confused. <laughs> What's wrong with the handshake? <laughs> well, you got you to gotta, yeah, pair it with, like, your double finger guns and the, hey, buddy, <laughs> wink. It's not like. It's not like habits are a skill tree, and I'm like, I'm going toward that, yeah, you know? <laughs> and then, like, move up to, like, slip a number in your hand when you shake the hand. You know, I, it's, it's not that. It just, it's just an accident. It happens. Put some oregano in there. <laughs> Get that pizza hand smell going. Get real good at tipping, tipping valet drivers. Yo, you want to get some pizza? <laughs> want to go bake a pizza? What oh are you talking my God. about? Huh? Huh? Dream? Yeah. yeah. Want to go rip rip that golf fairway? <laughs> That's right. God, everything in this game is extremely fake. Enjoy your oregano, sir. You too. <laughs> we had to decide what we were gonna call taking a hit, and yeah, that was that was the correct answer. Yeah, ripping the golf fairway was the good answer. Yeah, and also we've established that everyone in this game is a cop. Just to all of them. Yeah. So what? So then we get to the real talk. Um, so Matt, uh, Matt tells us more about his late wife, um, and her name is Rosa. Who's, she's Carmen Cita's mother, and they had uh, a band together. They were the two that were traveling around, and uh, he talks about Rosa and that she passed away when Carmen Cita was young. And we mentioned that our spouse uh, also passed when Amanda was young. So we finally have a timeline. We have very similar backstories. In this so, timeline. In this timeline, we have very similar backstories. So um, that seems really nice. You know, even if we weren't dating, that's a that's a big, horrible thing to happen. And what a wonderful thing to have somebody who knows exactly what that grief feels like. Yeah. Um, so we, we have a moment. And maybe that's why we're so comfortable around each other, because we've gone through the same grief. And uh, we, uh, we notice that there's a piano. There's a lot of instruments, so we notice there's a piano. And uh, we're like, oh, I- I'll play the piano. Uh, I remember how to do it from being in a ska band in high school. Yeah, all those ska bands that are fronted by piano players. Yeah, you know. I was gonna say, I'm like, did I misunderstand the genre? Because I'm not a big music guy, but, like, what the fuck? So, uh, then we get to sit down and think about, like, what are we gonna play? And, uh, the, the guide says to choose, uh, here's a classic. But you can, you can pit, you can say anywhere he hears Wonderwall, um, which is also <laughs> extremely good. Yeah. And, uh, when you pick a classic, you fucking play Chopsticks. <laughs> well, I kind of think. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt's like, wow, you know, this is, uh, this, that, that just happened, huh? And, and we laugh about it, and, uh, Matt's like, oh, I, I'll play, I'll play a song for you. And he plays us a, a really beautiful song, which we unfortunately do not get to hear in the game. But we assume that it is one of his original songs, either from when he was in the band or from, or since then. And, uh, but we don't, we don't get to hear it. And I'm sad. Yeah. And, uh, and immediately afterwards, we're like, holy crap, you should totally, you know, perform that. And you should, you know, you do that. And then, like, you bring it up to Matt and Matt's like, you know, yeah, I don't perform anymore. You know, the, the fun's gone, which <clears throat> you don't push it too far. He's, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to perform. But, uh, it's pretty obvious why he doesn't perform anymore. Yeah, of course. If your whole thing with, with your spouse was that you got, you were, you were, and it was just them. It wasn't like them and some other people. Yeah. And they were, what was the name of their, their band was called Stillness the Dancing. Yeah. And uh, so we we head home. And when we get home, Amanda says, why does it smell like a pizza place? And she says, man, I'm hungry. And we stop and like the camera shakes or whatever. And we're like, hi, hungry. And she's like, no, stop. And we go, I'm dead. And she falls on the ground. I love it. It's great. It is perfect. Also, that absolutely is happening with my dad. It's so good. Did the earth shake when he was preparing to say it? <laughs> yes, every time. Yeah, but that's because his dad. His dad is Kratos. <laughs> his baby. Oh, damn, sorry. <laughs> it's always, I, heard, I heard about that. 
It's always no, big No, don't boys. tell me. Don't tell me. I haven't played it. I haven't played it. <laughs> I was going to say. Spoilers, Kratos is a bad dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Who knew that? <laughs> Doesn't really have a greatest track record with that. <laughs> yeah, it's always big boy season when my dad is about to pun. <laughs> <laughs> so... We decide, we well, we want to go to open mic night. We're like, hey, there's an open mic night, and Amanda's going to come with us. And that's the end of the date. Get our date rank. S rank date. S, yeah, yeah, S. I got an A rank because I'm playing it wild. Yeah, I know. It was really hard not to pick anyway. Here's Wonderwall. <laughs> you know, it was kind of- I got I got one of the bars that filled up on this date for me was 520. <laughs> 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 um... God. And there's another one that was like cool, and that bar was completely empty. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I had a, a ska bar that was like almost completely empty because there was no fucking ska there. No ska. Of course, we keep talking about it. Um, uh, before we go to date three, did it? Is this the point now where Amanda's crying and yeah, kind of leave her? Yeah, Just back to the high school drama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I insisted. Basically, I was like, "Come on, tell me what it is," you know. Which is totally the wrong choice, and she doesn't tell you what it is, but even later, when you kind of apologize, she won't open up to you about it. Mm. Oh, bad ending. She doesn't tell you. That's interesting. There's more to the bad ending after day three, yeah. There's, yeah, there's more to it, but that's like, that was like a big major difference, I noticed. Yeah, this time I actually wrote down some of the stuff about what was the whole drama, and, um... And I even wrote down, and like writing it down made me get mad about it because I was like, "Why did Emma R lie about dating Noah and not just tell us? I thought we were friends." Yeah, what a bitch. Yeah, for real. Like, why? Like, okay, we had a crush on him, but like, so? Like, she had a she had a crush on the they had a crush on the same guy, and she ended up dating him. Like, she could just say something. It's weird that the whole group like I mean, it's such a high school thing, but like, it's weird that the whole group like was just like, okay, we don't like you anymore. That's, like, the thing, though, right? And it is, like, high school thing, but then it's, like, Amanda will never know that, I guess. You know? And that'll be one of those things that she'll forget about, and then one day, years later, like, oh, yeah, that made me so mad. Like, what was that even about, I wonder? Oh, well. Mm-hmm. What? That's that's my dad life lesson for everybody listening. And then, I don't I don't remember what, what we talked about for the responses last time, but, but the advice that I actually remembered to write down this time that I picked was uh, to pursue meaningful friendships and be like, look, if these people are just going to drop you over something stupid, then they're not very good friends, and you're not going to stay friends with them after you leave for college. Yep. I just, I just felt bad, like, when she was talking about, like, oh, I drafted a text to send all of them, and I was like, no, don't do it! <laughs> Just stop. Just walk away. No, fu- do it. Drag drag them all. <laughs> no. No. Just leave it alone. Yeah, you because know, she only ended up giving them more ammo, right? Because they, they shared it between themselves. But we all have to learn that lesson. I remember. Not me. That lesson myself in high school. Maybe in middle school. I don't know. I had a lot of that kind of stuff. But it was never about dating. It was always about, like, something even more petty somehow. Um, so, with that, uh, so basically, like, the thing is, like, it kind of explains, like, why Amanda wants to do so much stuff with us, I think, because she is been totally isolated from her friend group, so she is, like, let's do stuff together, like, let's, I'm gonna go with you, because you're, like, my only friend right now. It was sad. Oh, that's sad. I didn't think about it that way. Oh wow, my my Amanda has my Amanda has nowhere to go. <laughs> what a jerk. She still does stuff with you, she just doesn't tell you why. So, it's time for date three. Um there's like a big time skip between date three day, day two and date three, I feel. Um, because right when you, when you, and I think this is more to uh, the idea that you're supposed to date a bunch of different people and not just the same person three times, um, and hang out with everybody because, uh, it's like off camera, Amanda and Carmencita have become friends. Um, and so, and Carmencita is young. She's like in middle school. Um, I think she's about to go to high school though, right? Yeah. She gives her advice later about high school. She's like 13 or 14. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Not that they, like, hang out, hang out, but, it's, you know, it's not crazy that they're... Yeah, they get along. And, uh, yeah, and we, we head to open mic night. Uh, Hugo and Damien are there, uh, hanging out. They go, and they're like, this is cool, we're gonna, we're gonna watch. And, uh, 
we head to the we head to the back, I guess, to uh, talk to Matt and Pablo. Pablo's witch house band that was fake up until now um, is real, vacant veil, and he's gonna give his first performance. And he's already got like all this merch that he's gonna sell and everything like that. Pablo's always hustling. We love Pablo, and. Um, he, uh, so he's excited, and uh, we go over the set list, and the last people on the list are gonna be that horrible band from before, and Matt's like, no, we can't. We can't let them. They're gonna, like, get the fire marshal, fire marshal called on us, and, and Paul's like, well, they're, like, outside. Like, what are we gonna do? And we decide, I'll go, in all caps. I, I volunteer as the final act so that this horrible band doesn't have to be there. So, like, Matt's like, or Pablo's like, well, we can't just tell no. Who else will take the final s- slot? And I'm like, why, why do they have to take the final slot? Can't, can't you just move people around? I mean, one of the other acts was, a, like, a magician, so maybe not yeah. him, but... But it's more. It's, I guess it's a it's a symbolic gesture, you know. We're just like, no, no, we'll we'll help you out of the, this thing, and then like immediately, like the, our internal monologue for our dad is just like, why am I doing this? I don't know why. I don't know how to play an instrument anymore. Yeah, and we keep saying out loud like it'll be great, and it, then there's like five dialogue lines, uh, five internal dialogue lines of like, what are you doing? <laughs> and it's sort of like the uh, the voiceover in your head. It'll be great. It wasn't great. <laughs> yeah. Also, every time we say the word ska, there's, like, a sound effect that's, like, a bad trombone. Yeah, yeah, there's, like, this weird metal instrument going off in the background at random times. It's like, is somebody tuning up, or, or what's going on? No, it was, it, it's, it's ska in its dead, dead, dead form, trying to come oh, back ska, to life. the spirit of ska haunting us. Yeah. It was funny because I put, like, I guess previously when I've been playing the game, I was just, like, like maybe, like, one, you know, like, earbud in. And just because I normally would, like, be doing this while I'm doing something else. And, like, you know, and so I wasn't listening too intently. So I put, like, I had both of my headphones on to listen. And that's when I finally heard how bad the uh, the uh, voiceover is for, for Hugo. Now I understand what you were saying before because I guess I wasn't listening too intently before. Now I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that's freaking awful. Yeah, it's a shame. It just needs to be like filtered a little, a little bit. It, they just need some noise reduction. Yeah, yeah. There's background noise. You can actually hear background noise in, in the VO. So it's like, woof, yeah. Yeah, it just seems like some uh, unedited version of the audio made it into the game instead of the edited version. But, uh... What are you talking about? It's an Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. Can I talk about this one? Yeah. I. This goes into another mini game, and. I really like this one. You're, like, from the perspective of, like, in front of the keyboard, you've got, like, your two little disembodied hands. and It's like Surgeon Simulator? Yeah, it's like Surgeon Simulator, and it gives... I love how they do this. It gives you just enough to think that there might be a goal. So you're jamming your hand on the keyboards. It's making these really, you know, discord noises. There's a little thing on the comp- on the uh, keyboard. It's like melodious or good or wonderful. It like changes. And then there's a little like bouncing ball with the lyrics. And I'm thinking, well, it's something is changing. Do I have to like mash in time with the bouncing ball? It tells me beforehand to sing along, so I'm like, oh shit, yeah. is it gonna... Yeah, and there's a little button on the keyboard, which, as far as I can tell, doesn't do anything. And then at the end, it gives you an S rank with the uh, caption, uh, you deserve an S rank for trying your hardest. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Doing your best deserves an S. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Um, so, there before we... The, um... The little mini game happened, which I was a little disappointed in because I was hoping we could get some like little actual melodious music. But I I, I get what they were going for. Um, so we had some music references beforehand. Um, we Matt comes to greet us and is like, "Hey, are you ready for it?" And we're drinking uh, what they call a uh, flat white stripes. Uh, that's pretty simple. White stripes. That one's easy. Um. And we almost spit it out because we're so fucking nervous. Also, flat white is just milk, right? <laughs> no, flat flat white is an espresso drink with milk. Ah, okay. Isn't that a latte? 
I just wanted to imagine us just drinking warm milk, getting ready for our ska performance. <laughs> that would have kind of completed the scene, yeah. Yeah, I don't know the difference. They, they, they're two different things in the Starbucks menu. You got me. <laughs> okay, I, I am I am looking this up right now. It is, it says it's similar to a latte, but smaller and has less foam. There you go. And has a higher proportion of milk. Ah, oh, flat. Okay. Oh yeah. So it's not it's not like you know yeah foamy milk. It's flat white. Yeah. They they still foam it some, but yeah. I feel like I'm I'm cracking the code. <laughs> <laughs> this hip slang. Um. Oh yeah. Also, uh, of course, we're not the only one nervous about this. Uh, Matt, as he's like introducing all of the band, is like stumbling over himself, saying why he's stumbling over himself, and you you get a feel for the guy. Yeah, it's the first time you actually see him be nervous in front of other people that aren't isn't like in a one on one one. Yeah, in a long time. Yeah. So he eventually calls up uh, us up on stage, uh, and he says, "You know, we say we're the." Uh, Scommunist Manifesto, which I, I could not find anything on. Almost that's us. sure. Yeah, that's that's the name we made up in high school. I wasn't sure if it was actually made up name because, like, I'm gonna be honest, ska band names are really fucking bad. They're all like that, yeah. So I, I was. That's why I was like, let me check to make sure this isn't actually a thing first. Um, and then we say, uh, or you can call me by my stage name, and we have three options. Um. The first is Frankie Two Tone, which I could find nothing on, which is something they just made up. But Two Tone is a uh, what they call a wave of ska. So yeah, it's like ska punk. Yeah, it was in like the '70s and stuff like that. Then we have a uh, Five Iron Freddy, which is um, a reference to Five Iron Frenzy, which is a ska band. Christian ska. <laughs> is it? I didn't notice. I I've, I've never heard of these guys beforehand. Yeah. Five Iron Frenzy's Christian Ska. Wow. Dang, you guys know a lot about this. Well, no, I, I looked this up because I had not heard about uh, th- this band. But I have heard about the last one, which is uh, Thomas Kalnoki, um, which is the... Um, he started the band Catch-22 and then moved on to another band called um, Streetlight Manifesto. Oh, shit. And did a bunch of uh, solo work. Um, I like Streetlight Manifesto. <laughs> Well, Jim knows a lot about music, too. Like, you're like the, the Matt analog in this, I'm finding so far, you know? Yeah, but... In, in so far as you, you... Well, I mean, when I knew, you know, like, when we were friends, like, you and, like, our, our other mutual friend, you know, you guys, like, knew that stuff, and I didn't. So that was, like, you know, you were the experts, at least in my relative level of things. Yeah. Uh, we've got a, a mutual friend, uh, Rob, who's probably way more like a Matt analog, you know, somebody who's, like, you know, has used to be a DJ and collects like in is in bands and has like a gigantic collection of music and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I was sort of like the light version of that. Look, look at, look at the modesty analog here. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, as I mentioned in the first episode, I have a, I also had like our dad, a really awkward ska phase when I was in high school. <laughs> so of course, as we went into it, I'm like, Oh shit. I had to, I had to, Tell everyone what all these references are. Everybody who played a horn in band had a ska phase. Because that yes. was the only music you could play. And, and you wanted to be cool. Oh, yeah, so. of course. <laughs> ska, the coolest thing in existence. Um, But no, I was actually surprised that they have some of the references in there. A lot of, like, sort of, like, high-end stuff. Like, if you just sort of know about, like, a genre of music... And they go into different genres, as we've talked about through all of Matt's route. Uh, if you just sort of vaguely know about it, you would have heard some names like uh, Killer Mike. I've heard of that before, even though I'm not uh, too much into rap. Um, and then they have some really good like indie stuff, which is like stuff I want to check out. So, yeah, like I was just, I'm still kind of impressed that they put Pup, which is the real band, in here and put their song in here, and it's actually a really good song, and I want to check them out. Yeah, I like that the mu- the music that is referenced in this game is good. Like the music that that uh, Matt rep- uh, ref- uh, recommends for you is good. Like it's it's nice, and it's probably like probably a lot of people would think it was good. Probably not a lot of people would would pull up that like chill punk kind of sounding thing and be like, oh, this is unlistenable. So it's nice. Yeah, and it, they, I think they really nail, like, if these are 40 to 50-year-old cool dads who are actually still connected to the music scene, this is probably what he would be listening to, you know? 
Oh, one one thing I wanted to one thing I wanted to add. I'm not sure really where else to put this. Um, I brought up last episode. If you don't name your dad, it defaults to dad. Uh, when you get up on stage, uh, Matt announces your full name. If you have not named your dad, the, your full name is Dad McDad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> it's good. You know, so I'm gonna put it because I played I played this mini game that we're about to play. Um, my audio jack on my laptop PC is jacked up, uh, and um, that was not intentional. But uh, and usually I have to use a USB. I use my USB mixer and plug into that audio jack. Blah blah blah. But the point is that I've been, I play a lot of Dream Daddy without audio. Um, and this mini game, you have to play along to something. It's like tickle those ivories. You use the mouse to click on a piano. Something happens out of that. There uh, is a So you had no idea that it didn't matter at all. It was complete nonsense. Well, I figured that when I S-ranked it. <laughs> <laughs> but what was the process, though? Was there ever a point where you kind of doubt yourself and say, am I actually doing anything? Am I not figuring it out? There's, like, a part on the piano that says, pick it up, and then later it says, like, cool, and I'm like, oh, is that the meter for how well I'm <laughs> No, 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 pick it up is a ska thing. Yeah. It's pick it up, pick oh. it up, pick it up. Yeah, that's, you can't have ska without saying pick it up a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> so, what happens, like, what's the sound like when you're doing it? Uh, it's just, bang, it's, it's a child that has never played piano before. It's exactly as you imagine it. Yeah, it's just the sound that it would make, yeah? I Okay, I thought the joke would be you do that, it sounds like somewhat decent or whatever, but it's kind of what I think it should have been. Yep. Yeah, it's literally just you banging your hands on the piano. And then at the end, it's like one person clapping. It is accurate to what you are tapping on the piano, which is your whole hand, but <laughs> you know, the notes are correct. You can't play good. You can't play anything. Like you, if you, even if you tap it in time with the music, it still sounds awful. It's because you, you won't. It will not let you play with like just one note at a time. You have to slam your entire hand down on the keyboard. There is no in between. <laughs> yeah. You are either not playing or you're smashing your entire fist and face on the keyboard like an idiot. Yeah. And like you get the WASD for the left hand and the mouse for the right, and but each one is just like burr, 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 burr. And then there's the button that you can push. I don't even know if it does anything. Speaking of pressing a bunch of things at once and then... All right, all right sorry. Um, oh, that joke's not going to make sense when he fixes it. All right, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, well, Matt comes to our rescue. Hooray! Suddenly. And Matt comes up on stage with a guitar and starts jamming with us and goes into a... They say he's the checkerboard tie-wearing angel. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and he's got confidence now, and he comes to save the day. And also, he's playing along apparently really well with us, so like it makes it sound better, which I'm like, whatever we were playing, you can't make that sound good. <laughs> he's just playing a real song, and then we're just, maybe we just, we finally started playing just one note at a time. <laughs> he, just, he just unplugs you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just playing over the speakers. You're like the little brother that asked to play Nintendo with you. And you give him the unplugged controller. <laughs> You're winning. Yeah, he accidentally kicks out the plug to your, to your keyboard. He's like, oh, that, that popped out. Let me play this riff. You're doing great, ska piano. <laughs> also, we, we can't miss the fact that like the, the lyrics are, beam me up, Scotty, to the ska track Enterprise. Yep. It's just real bad. And for the record, everyone's shifting in their seats uncomfortable when we're playing, but when Matt gets up there, now they're all cheering for Matt. Yeah, like way more than than you would expect. So something something's going on. Everybody's congratulating him. Everybody's really happy for him. Yeah, and then he plays he plays like more songs. That apparently, were songs that he you know he played with with, with Rosa as Stillness the Dancing, and the crowd was absolutely nuts for that because you leave the stage eventually. You're like, yeah, just you go ahead, buddy. You're the good one. And like uh, Hugo and one other dad who I am blanking Damien on right is now. there too. Damien, yeah. thank you. Yes. Uh, Hugo and Damien, I think they even say to you, like, that was great, you know, like, uh, surreal, like, how did you, you know what I mean? Like, they kind of, like, I think, like, kind of thank you, compliment you on getting Matt, like, playing again. Yeah. And we somehow had no idea, like, we somehow did not put the pieces together that he hasn't played music since Rosa died. Also, when we talk about, um, beforehand, when we talk about, uh, Witch House, Damien gets super excited, like, oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. God bless. And then we're like, oh, but it's bad, apparently. And Damien's like, oh, A shame. 
So, um, so basically, after the show, everything goes well, and then... Wait, is this after the show that that happens? I'm sorry, the next part. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. We, we offer to help clean up. That's right. Because then, you know, that's... Uh, Matt thanks us, and it's like, you know, I remember I used to be so scared, but, uh... You know, I just want to make people happy, I think, or something like that. And he goes, and I saw you up there all scared, and it kind of reminded me. And that's what gave me the the courage to do it again. So, I, I, you know, I don't know if you did that on purpose or not, but I can't thank you enough. Matt's like, um, yeah, I used to feel very nervous a lot when I was up on stage w alone. And I saw you doing that, and I'm like, oh, God, I don't want someone to feel the same way as I did. And I like that, too, because he talks about Rosa and, like, their relationship and how she was, like the the confident one and he was just like you know he didn't have to have to do that like he could just go along with her and i like that we're clearly different like it's it's like oh like he's learning to love again so we can play music but it's not like we're exactly the same as his dead wife like right like we're a very different person from her but he feels the same comfort with both of us and i i really like that detail because you could get into a lot of sort of stereotypes of of romance with it and i like that we're like very clearly still very different people. And Matt, and then Matt kisses us slight, like a, a little bit, and like I'm, I'm sorry about that. And yeah. Like, no, it was, it was great. <laughs> and then, and then there's a longer kiss, and we're in love, and we, oh, and he's, Matt's like, you want to come back to my place, and we do. Date's over. So, so, we, we go back to Matt's place, but Amanda and Carmen Cedar are having a sleepover at our place. Which is weird because that's a kid in middle school with a with the the senior in high school, and it's yeah, just like, they're gonna destroy the whole house. Like, oh, it's they're gonna trouble. burn the house down. Like, it, technically, there's nothing wrong with it, but you know something bad's gonna happen. Hey, you know, but you know, you know what we said earlier on this route was my unquenchable thirst will be my downfall. <laughs> and there you have it. Yep. Was that it? My unquenchable. It was something. Yeah, like it was something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so the next day, of course, is Amanda's graduation. We throw the party for her. All the dads are there. I'm going to assume this was all the same for you all up until the Sakura tree scene with Matt. Um, I will tell you for me, though, I won't mention, well, I'm only a phone call away. And Amanda's like, well, about that, dad, you know, I really feel like you should have given me some freedom and independence. And, and I think it's time when I go away to college that we set some boundaries. Wow. Oof. And and our dad's like, wow, you know, I really thought I knew about parenting, but clearly I have a lot to learn. Dang. You just got out-parented by your kid. That's that's a pretty, like, like, as a parent, I'd be like, okay, well, that's, you're being pretty adult about this, at least. Yeah, I also feel like even though we can be, like, strict and stuff, like, man, is that a far cry from real life strictness and what really happens that makes kids not want to talk to their parents when they leave home. Yeah, I gotta say, like, even doing the quote-unquote bad dad route, you're still, like, a super nice, like, parent, and you take her to burritos, and you t the two of you joke around. Like, to be totally frank, it doesn't, it feels a little, I can't say out of left field, but it's like... I'm guessing you, you still throw the party at the end for her? Yeah, yeah, you do. It feels incongruent, I guess, because obviously the game doesn't want to go too, like, dark and have, like, an actual bad parent or something. But it does feel, like, a little, like, I don't know. I'm acting a bit out of character when I make these wrong choices. Or maybe not out of character, but, like, this doesn't feel, con again, like, it's not congruent. Like, it doesn't feel like uh, this is a problem I've had for a long time or mm -hmm. something. I don't know. It just, like... I, again, it's like, uh, it's the problem of you don't want the game, the narrative, to get too serious. And, you know, because it's still a comedy at the end of the day. So I, I'm not, I, this is not like a serious criticism where I'm like, they should have fixed this and it would have been better. Like, I think it's like, yeah, I get why this is like kind of a problem and I'm okay with it. Yeah, I almost feel like, I, I think there's, there's like a way to handle like incorporating a little bit more of the parenting style that we see in like the okay dad option and like, Without, you know, like, I feel like you could have made, like, maybe Amanda's more nervous. Like, her responses are more nervous because it's, like, more like if you had that kind of parent who's always nervous about you, then you reflectively become more nervous. Like, that, maybe something like that. That's a little more, like, because, yeah, because we're all, we're never going to go into actual bad parenting. We're only going to go into a little bit too strict, but forgivable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, and so then we have our Sakura scene with Matt after, you know. 
Oh, and then Amanda and Carmencita are together at the party, and uh, Amanda's giving Carmencita advice about starting high school. And and she's, like, goofing around. She's like, you gotta establish yourself as leader. And then she's like, just kidding. Just hang out with people that you like. <laughs> and then and then we we say that hasn't really worked out for you, though, has it, honey? <laughs> That's that's how you got your okayest dad rating there. Jesus. <laughs> really? No, 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 no. Oh, you just said that out loud at your computer? Gossipy. On the bus, actually. Everybody was look- they didn't they didn't have the context. Except for one guy who had been watching them the whole time. He's like, I like he was like, I like the Craig route better. And I'm like, get the fuck away from me. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> So one thing that is different since uh, we aren't dating Craig this time, uh, his kids uh, come over and say that they have eaten like eight pieces of ice cream cake and keep trying to blame that on each other. Mm-hmm. They're great. And Craig is just happy that we're we're still bros, that we're or that we're bros again. Yeah, we're clearly friends with everybody, so it's good. And but Joseph does make that comment, like maybe we can hang out sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Which I think happens at the end of every non-Joseph route. Yeah. Probably. So, uh, so then we we get the uh, the credits roll, right? Uh, we we hang out with with Matt one last time. He, he under the tree. He says he hasn't felt as happy in a long time. It's very it's very sweet. It's very sweet. And he's making music again, and and we're like, well, at least we're good kissers. Yeah, he's like, we, we, our dad is like, oh, well, I want to listen to your, your, your the new song you're working on, but I think we should add a horn section to it. <laughs> and, and and he's like, you know what? Sure. <laughs> Which, if that isn't true love, I don't know what is. <laughs> Credits roll. Bonus, this bonus picture of Matt playing the guitar with his shirt open. It's a nice picture. These are all very nice pictures. Another good route, Dream Daddy. Yeah. yeah. Overall, I, re- I really like Matt. What did you guys prefer, Matt or Craig? Matt. Matt. I I went I had to go Matt. I like Craig. Um I felt like Matt I, I like Craig, like the investigation thing I thought was like a kind of funny, like sort of non traditional type of quote unquote date, you know? It starts with exercise and stuff. I, I kinda dug that for even though it's kinda not realistic or whatever. Matt, I felt, was almost a little stereotypical at times. In ter- not, like, in terms of, like, you go on, you go to a concert with somebody, and then you're going to get on stage, and they're going to come with you and stuff. I really liked it, mind. But like, like, well, Craig has a stereotype of, oh, there's only one sleeping bag. We're going to get naked and jump in this water. Like, I think that's the whole point of the... The game has a lot of good, good cute stereotypes like that in it. Yeah, I get I, I get you. I, I, I'm not, like, saying that Craig's didn't. I'm just saying Craig had that one date there that felt kind of atypical you know i don't know i, I that's just i don't know i'm not i i i can't logically defend it I'm both of them are both of them are people who have interests that are different than yours who are very open to like bringing you into that world and don't judge you for not knowing about it and like it's so good i i think i like matt better because he's more like other people i've dated in real life but they're both really good yeah, I think I like Matt better because whereas um, Craig had the problem of like being super organized and having things together, but also being really anxious and feeling like he's not doing enough. Whereas Matt, I think, has a problem that's more relatable to me, where he has something that he clearly loves, and you know he loves music. He's into all these kind of different bands, and he knows how to play music. But he's got the problem where he. He still likes it, but he can't enjoy it as much as he used to because of reasons. And that's and and that's like you, except instead of music, it's Dungan Ronpa. Um, oh no, I'm still obsessed with that. Yeah, no, I mean, I'll, I'll get there eventually. But I was giving you like a little burn, but also a little plug. You know, I, I know, yeah. kind of like a like like a love tap, as they call it. Dangan Werewolf, folks, the stream. I'm gonna be on it, like soon. Which by the time this comes out will have been six months ago. So travel, travel back a little bit. <laughs> anyway, I'm on that sometimes, and uh, everybody always kills me first. Well, you say that, but you've been doing better lately. You've won the last couple times. You can't say that. I got, I got, I was the culprit, and I got away with it, which was my greatest yeah victory. I can die happy now. 
I feel like we should get the band together again one t- one more time. Yeah. If, I mean, we, we love calling each other out on our bullshit so much. Like, why not do it in game form? I mean, I, you know, I w- I'm down with that. I, you know, uh, I just, like, I haven't had time recently, but I could make some time. Um, I was actually, po- I had the opportunity to get on Arcade Pit versus you and Kaz, by the way. I know. We were very sad you weren't there because we really wanted to shit talk, but we couldn't because we were being polite. And we were like, oh, if Slow Beep was here, we could have been yelling at each other constantly and it wouldn't have been a big deal. I I basically have to butter up the people we're going against because I can't help myself. And I'm just <laughs> like, yeah, you guys are cooler. And then during the game, like, you fucking idiot, yeah. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it'll be great. <laughs> Someday. So for Dream Daddy... um, Who do we want to date? Yeah, what are you guys feeling? Oh, yeah, that's right. I feel like we should date the... Uh... The, the guy that's always trying to outdo us, whoever he is. Yeah, Brian. Brian. Brian's my pick, too. I was thinking Hugo, but I have a, I have an interesting suggestion for the next two episodes. I was going to suggest uh, Joseph. What if we go on two dates with a dad, but then instead of the third date with that dad, we go on two dates with a different dad? And then just, like, save our game and reload for the two different endings? Oh, yeah, that part. Hmm. Uh, I mean, you, you could fast forward. I, guess. I don't know. Yeah, maybe... Well, you could do that. Yeah, you could save your game and reload it. Yeah, I feel like there's a version of this podcast where we did, like, date one with everyone, date two with everyone, and then, like, saved our game and reloaded and did all the endings. Like, there's an alternate universe somewhere where we did that and we all just hate each other at that point. Yeah, I don't know. Some universe where we're more organized. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Maybe that's that's another way to play this game. Um, See, I was thinking that we could we could just do a whole route considering how like it goes really fast yeah yeah next time we'll do a, a whole route from beginning to end of of one dad although if you want to set up your saves that way i won't stop you we might finish this whole game and then be like damn we should have done it the other way and i'm sorry if that's what happens so wait so either way we're doing two episode two dates for the next dad all three for the next dad all the way to the end oh all three okay all right 100 percent dad we had two votes, Brian, one vote, Hugo, one vote, um... Joseph. Uh, Joseph? Uh, Who's the fifth person? Me. <laughs> well, who would you have done if you hadn't heard any of those? Damien? <laughs> you know that, yeah. <laughs> but realistically, I mean, my my top two of, like, who's probably my actual type is Damien and Hugo. That doesn't help anything either. I also feel like we should get Joseph out of the way. Yeah, that was sort of the reason I, I was doing Joseph, because... Uh, you know, can sort of tackle him in the middle. Okay, we did. Yeah, we did two nice dads. Let's do. Uh, let's do Joseph. All right, I'm down with Joseph. Let's do. Let's do a bad dad. Yeah. yeah. Bad dad Joseph. No wait. There's. Yeah. There's two endings with Joseph, right? A good and a bad. Uh. There's actually two endings for every everybody, isn't there? Like. Oh. If you if you like say no, you don't. I don't. I don't remember. There's like jo- the Joseph's endings are based on whether or not you like agree to get together with him or not. It's like the third date. If you f- screw it up, I think you can you can screw it up. Then you get yeah. the bad ending because you've already committed to the third date. But it's like bad in that like you don't get together. But it's not bad as in like they hate you now. I I would also like to cover that uh that whole secret ending or hidden ending, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. As far as instructions for viewers, you, we're gonna S rank Joseph next. Yeah. Yes, I think it is most appropriate to get Joseph's good ending, which perhaps is not. It doesn't. Maybe it won't turn out the way you expect. Yeah. But it's good. It's the better ending. Right. And we can discuss the bad Joseph ending, which doesn't exist right anymore. It wasn't in the game, but there is video that's been mined, so we can like talk about that. Yeah. It's like, does it really exist if it's been like put out? I don't know. I mean, yeah. It's, uh, that's a philosophical thing, but we can discuss next time. Yeah. It's, it's like Doki Doki Dead Club. <laughs> Our video games are... <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> yes. I actually have some... Uh, my opinion changed about that after watching it, so... Okay. Cool. Okay. Get ready for a spicy dad discussion next time right. on Visual Novel Book Club. Um, Drink a glass of water when you wake up and it'll help you wake up better. Wow. Really? That was That's good advice. It's on the loading screen. Wow. Thanks, Dad. Another one is go ask your mom.
Do that. Bye. All right. Take it easy.